What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and on this week's episode of Just The Tips, we're gonna be talking about kick drums, but specifically hip hop kick drums. So not like the last kick drum video. Uh, but before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, uh, hit the notification bell. You know what you gotta do, run the intro. What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and we're back for another week of Just The Tips. Um, on this week, we are going to be talking about uh, kick drums, and I've done another video on kick drums, but it was, it was more for a pop record, um, and I just want to talk a little bit, uh, this will be a shorter video, but just a little bit about uh, kick drums for hip hop records. Um, obviously, in a hip hop record, the kick drum is pretty much the most important thing in the song, uh, and so we're going to address a little bit of that today. Um, I must admit... Uh, this will be a shorter video. We're kind of putting this together last minute. I've had, a uh, uh, quite a busy week. Um, and, uh, to be, to be honest, I'm, I'm pretty exhausted. So we're, we're going to put this together fairly quickly here. Um, I had the amazing privilege of, uh, helping moderate a, a chat with, uh, the amazing artist Platon and Edward Snowden on uh, clubhouse. So, uh, you know, Aside from music, I do a number of interesting things, and uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, that has like occupied a, a large part of my week. So, so this will have to be a shorter video. But uh, just because it's shorter, it does not mean it is worse. Uh, we are going to be packing a lot in this, uh, and I just want to, you know, I've got a song here. Uh, this is a session uh, from a new song called "Pretty Little Thing" from an artist, uh, Aria, who I work with a lot, who is incredible, and. Um, you know, I wanted to sort of create this second video about kick drums, uh, just because there's a lot of like, you know, question marks about how do you handle a kick in hip hop? And I've heard a lot of different things. And the reality is there is no rules. I think you guys have heard me say this a lot. Um, I've heard a lot of engineers say, you know, with hip hop, you know, kick drums, like don't touch it. Just like if you have the good, the right sample, you just drop that sample in and you're good to go. And yeah, I suppose if you have the right sample that works. Uh, but in this case, um, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of producers kind of use the same samples now. Like everyone uses, you know, the, the spins 808 or the murder beats 808 or, or, uh, you know, the okay, wow kick or whatever. Like we've all seen the, these kicks get shared around. And so, um, while a lot of us are using the same samples, uh, every song is a little bit different. And so, uh, yes, sometimes you can use a kick and you don't have to touch it at all. And other times you actually want, uh, you know, based on how you address the rest of your mix, you need to make sure that that kick fits. And this song is a great example of that. Um, so you'll see here is my kick. Why don't we make this a little bit bigger just so we can see what we're dealing with here. And, you know, uh, we have four plugins on the kick and then we have a, a send going to a key input, which I'm using to sort of uh, counter the 808 a little bit. Uh, sort of just have some ducking side chaining going on with the 808. Um, so this is kind of standard how I operate with a lot of kicks. But in this case, I had to do a little more to get this kick to sit right. Um, and I guess, why don't I play you a portion of the song here uh, with the kick, and then I'll kind of deconstruct it. Uh, so let's just play maybe, uh, I don't know, 10 seconds of this song. Here we go. Okay, so that's a good good amount that we can we can hear. Um, you know, the kick sounds pretty good right now. It's cutting through. You're hearing it well. Uh, there's some high frequency attack. Uh, let me play you the kick with nothing on it. Let's just hear what that sounds like, and then I'll do a quick A-B with everything on it, and then we'll work through each of the plugins and why they're doing what they're doing. Okay, so that's with nothing on it. Now let's hear it with uh, all the plugins on it. So as you can tell, there is more attack, there is a little more brightness, but there's also a little more low end too. Um, 
but it's shaped in, in a little bit of a unique way. So let's just kind of run through everything. Uh, so let me loop this and let me add the first plugin BX Boom here. And, and we'll, we'll work with the kick on solo for the time being. So as you can tell, this BX Boom, it adds a little bit of low-end distortion and more, more boominess. It's doing some subharmonic stuff. Uh, you know, it's got a little MS things happening there. Um, you know, I use this a lot for kick drums. And this is actually a really simple plugin to use. It's by Plugin Alliance. Um, this is not a sponsored video, by the way. This is just something I use all the time. Um, and there's really just you know a, a value of 0 to 100. So I've got it set at 43. You can go negative as well. Um, but I've got it set around 43 here and I'll, I'll show you what each sounds like. And then there's kind of low, mid and high. Um, and this is just, you know, it, it amplifies different, uh, frequencies. I don't know exactly what they are, but my guess it's something like, you know, 40 or 60 Hertz, maybe 80 Hertz and hundred Hertz, something like that. Um, so I have it on the low to get like the really sub stuff. So let's like play with this and see what it does. You can see right about there, oh, right about there around 40 to 43. Um, I don't like to go too heavy with this. I just like to let it kiss, but you start to hear uh, some of those, uh, oh, my mouse is bugging out here. You get, you start to hear some of those um, low frequencies really pop out around that 40 uh, value. Um, and now let me cycle through the low, mid and high so you can hear what the, what differences it makes. So you can kind of hear what each does. Um, obviously, what's important is how this works in context of the beat. So we can hear that in a second. Um, but I kind of liked where the where the low was, and this adds some nice subharmonic stuff to a, a hip hop kick that uh, you know already has good low end. But there's certain things we want to emphasize. So that's what I like that for. The next plugin I have is just a simple compressor, and it's not even doing much. Uh, we're getting a little bit of compression here. Let's let's hear what we're doing. Now you'll notice I have the mix very low. If I turn that mix way up, we're gonna get way more compression. So this is more like a parallel compression thing we've got going on. So as you can tell, that's like a little too tight for, for what I wanted. Um, but we kind of like it down here around 10%, just like kissing it a little bit, controlling the signal, um, and just kind of tightening up the tail of it. And we've got this like punch uh, setting on, which adds a little more of that punchiness. Um, I guess it's doing some low frequency attack. Uh, uh, you know, there's some sort of uh, algorithm that it's doing there. Um, and then let's, let's talk about the EQing that we're doing. So, you know, this first plugin BX boom, this adds the nice low frequency stuff that we want. So we're not actually adding any low. In fact, we're actually taking a very tiny bit, half a DB out with a fairly narrow Q. Um, at about 50 hertz, 49 hertz. But what are the other things we did add? Um, well, I added about 178 hertz to a little over 2 dB here. And that accounts for some of the punchiness, some of the, like, you know, the punchiness that you feel in your chest. You know, that kind of lands somewhere around 120 up to maybe 200 hertz. 200 might be a little high, but somewhere between 120 and, you know, 180, 200 hertz, somewhere in there. Basically, this, if you can see on the Pro-Q3, this little window between the, this line here and this line here, that's kind of your punchy area. Um, and then uh, and then we added some top, but because there isn't a whole lot of top information, this is kind of just generally making it brighter and adding a little more attack. So let's hear what this is doing uh, without, and then I'll add uh, the EQ. Now we add. So you guys get it. Um, let, now let me A, B, I'll take the high off and then we'll A, B it just to hear the punch and then we'll add the high. So let's turn that off and let's bypass it. And then when I turn it on, you're only gonna hear what I'm adding to the punch. 
Here we go. Now we'll bypass it again. And now we'll add. So you can tell it adds some of that like, you know, low mid, uh, you know, or upper upper frequencies of the of the low section uh, punchiness. And that doesn't rumble your speakers. It really just helps cut through. Uh, and so, you know, I like punchy kicks. It's just kind of stylistically what I like to do. Um, I've noticed in hip hop now, a, a lot of records are adopting these like kind of, uh, how would I describe? I guess like flubbier kicks, if, if that word makes sense to you. I don't think it's a real word, but kind of these kicks that uh, have a, a, an insane amount of low end, but kind of rumble a speaker in not a very clean way. That's just not really my aesthetic. I don't personally love that. Um, certain songs it works really well on, but uh, for me, I like a nice punchy tight kick because I want the 808 to represent that like really, really low frequency stuff. Um, okay, and now let's add the high frequency and see what that's doing. And now we add. So as you can tell, that that high frequency, and it's a very wide band and very broad. Um, when you look at the spectrometer that's that's happening on, on the Pro-Q3, there's not a ton of high frequency information, but it is there. And so that's why we're raising it, you know, almost 6 dB, a lot more drastic. Um, and it's kind of wide frequency. We don't want a narrow thing. We don't want any like resonance popping out. We want a nice smooth curve. Um, none of this is impacting the low frequency at all, but we want it to cut through a mix. And so this is how we do it. In the last kick drum video I did, um, you know, I, this doesn't work for all kicks, but, um, you know, if you have a kick that has zero high frequency information, which is actually quite common, if you want to add some of that high frequency attack, uh, sometimes you actually have to add another sample underneath, like whether it's a really tight hi-hat or a click sound or something, usually low frequency, very short, very tight, um, very attacky, uh, and you layer that with each uh, kick drum, uh, literally just on a new track, and you copy it where, where every single kick drum lands, uh, and, uh, and then you kind of mix that in, and that's how you add. But in the case of a kick drum like this, where there actually is some high frequency information, then you can just simply boost it. And, and that'll, that'll help give you that, that front end um, clickiness that cuts through whether you're on earbuds or uh, laptop speakers or things that don't translate bass very well. Um, you wanna make sure you're still hearing that kick drum when there isn't much bass. So um, that's kind of what this achieves. So that's what our EQ is doing. And then finally, um, we have another compressor and it's doing some very, very subtle stuff, but you will hear it. So uh, I'm gonna leave it bypassed, and just like with everything, let me loop this kick drum section here. The first one or two go rounds, I'll leave the bypass on, and then I'll turn bypass off like that, and you'll hear what it's doing. All right, here we go. Now, I would encourage you guys to put headphones on, uh, something with good uh, low low frequency uh, that so you can hear the, the entire complexity of a kick. Because if you're listening to this on a phone or a laptop, you might, you're not gonna get all the nuance. But if you have your headphones on or you're in a studio, you got some good speakers, um, you will absolutely be able to hear this. And this is just another uh, compressor that just tightens everything that we've done. You know, we've added some of that high frequency now, you know, we still want to keep it nice and tight. And so this just does, a, a, you know, very subtly tightens it up, um, and gets it kind of locked into the mix. Um, so that's kind of how I process this kick drum. And now I want to sort of, you know, play the mix and I'll a B everything in the kick drum again. So you can kind of see how this helps lock in, uh, lock it into the mix. All right, here we go. Uh, and I'll start with everything bypassed, actually. Oh, here we go. Cool, let's run it back with everything on. Pretty little thing. I be in a club with the pretty little things. 
I be so loud with the mouth that cries We straight down the street, she ain't ten degrees, man said All white jeans, breath so clean And she look close to me cause she love nice things Heart so iced out, think I might freeze And shorty walk around like she's a pig white scene Hey, wait, yeah, don't talk So you know, it's really that simple. I'm, I mean, I'm not doing too much drastic things here, but sometimes, you know, you do have to make changes to a kick to get it fit, to fit into the mix with the aesthetic that you want. And at the end of the day, you know, I've said this a hundred times on this channel, there is no rule to mixing. Don't let any engineer or any producer or anyone tell you, you have to do it this way. There is general rules that, you know, you know, you don't want to have a kick, a bass, an 808, and all these things in the low frequency playing at once. It's not going to sound very good. But there is no rule over how your kick drum should sound. And I thought this video would be helpful because I've been hearing a lot of engineers say, no, just throw a kick drum on there and put nothing on it. And um, and yeah, sometimes that does work. And if you take the time to find the right sample, they're absolutely right. You can just throw a kick drum on and most of these kick drums have been processed a hundred times and you don't need to uh, add more processing provided it fits well into your mix. But in some cases you do need to make adjustments and also not only adjustments to, you know, to work with the other parts of your track and the vocals, but also just adjustments to match to your taste. Cause as engineers, we all do something a little bit different. Everybody is right. This is all subjective. There's no rules. So if you like things, I happen to like kick drums that are really tight and punchy and have some high frequency to them in addition to the low end so that they cut through. That's just my aesthetic and something I like. Um, but a lot of engineers like just really subby kicks um, and then they let other elements of the mix, you know, uh, occupy some of that high frequency stuff. And that's okay too. So I'm just kind of providing you another, uh, another angle to look at things and maybe this works for you. So I'd say I'd encourage you try it. Um, you know, go get some of these plugins if you like them. Uh, again, this is not a sponsored video. None of these guys are paying me. These are just things that I actually use. This is a real mix. This song is coming out soon. Um, and uh, I'll leave a link. It's not out yet, but uh, I'll leave a link in the description box for, you know, for those people who check this video later and it is out. Um, so anyways, uh, that is the Just the Tips this week. It's a much shorter episode, but uh, thank you guys for joining me. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, uh, hit the notification bell, do what you got to do, and I will see you next Friday for, I guess next Friday would be another story time. So see you guys then. Peace.